what's going good, you guys? Just giving my little, and I'm mean, just being different here. Usually, I have, you know, kind of like a review of saying, oh, you know, this, this so and so happened, that happened. Instead of doing all that, I think I'm going to do what I usually have done in the past and been a lot more comfortable doing, meaning that I am going to, you know, basically, long story short, uh, you know, just basically get my thoughts on things, you know, and it's going to be out of order, you know, it's not going to be like, oh, well, this happened at the end, why are you seeing me at the beginning, you know, something like that, you know, instead of, just, just, just bear with me, alright, you guys have known me forever now, just, just, you know what to do, alright, so, thank you. Anyways, so, this whole tag team thing, this whole tag team title situation, you know, I'm glad that Usos won it. I'm glad that the new WWE Tag Team Champions. But why couldn't WWE wait till WrestleMania to do this? You know, here you have, you know, a young, talented tag team like the Usos. Well, in my opinion, I thought they were going to be the second coming of Crown Time. You know, a really good, talented tag team. They just never won the tag titles for some odd reason. But nonetheless, you know... It's good they won, you know, the Usos, but why can't you do this at WrestleMania? Why can't you give them their, you know, WrestleMania moment? It just, it doesn't make much sense. Why have it on the wall? You know, why give it away on free television when you give it your biggest pay-per-view, your biggest show of the entire year, WrestleMania? Why can't you do it then? It doesn't make much sense, especially since now that a lot of tag teams are breaking up or already broken up. So it's like, okay, from about good old five, six months ago, Tag team division was pretty damn stacked in those days. Now it's like, what tag team is left? The White Family? Like, really? Other than New Age Outlaws, who the hell is this gonna face? The Wyatt? Not a bad tag team, I'm not complaining whatsoever, but, you know, let's see my checks. White Family's been something with Tina. At least Bray is. I'm gonna have Rowan and Harper to uh, go with the Usos, maybe? That'd be a pretty good match, I think. Give them that down or something. You know, until the video, they'll put it in the pre-show. Not even gonna go there, not even gonna go there. So, yeah. Alright, and then I'm gonna go with this whole Daniel Bryan wanting a match with Triple H and him saying no. Okay, this was great. And yeah, people were like, what are you talking about? This is stupid. Triple H should have given him his match with the you know. Guys. Picture it as a typical Triple H match, other than last year. Think about it. The two matches he had, now, now I'm, I know I know I'm comparing this to the Undertaker thing, but bear with me. When, you know, the whole, with Triple H Undertaker, obviously Triple H wanted a match with Undertaker, and at first, the very first time, Undertaker was kind of like, no, and then thought about it, and obviously he said yes. And then, of course, the second time around, Triple H, but that time it was quote unquote corporate. And, you know, he, Undertaker's the one that wanted a match, and Triple H was like, nah. You know, it obviously took Triple H, what, a week, two weeks, I believe, max two weeks, that, you know, the match, Triple H finally said, fine, you got the match. I think it's very kind of like a similar situation here, where Daniel Bryan goes over to Triple H and says, Hunter, I want my match at WrestleMania. You need to say yes to it. And then Triple H is like, no, I'm not giving you your match, Because that's not the best for business, sir. Because you see, you're a B-plus player at best, sir. I'm the gamer. I'm God, sir. I'm a 14-time world champion. Bow down to my knees, sir. There's a reason why his name sounds like King of Kings, guys. He's not doing it just because he loves Motorhead that much. That maybe he does, but... That's for another story. You know, it, it takes time, guys. So, you know, I'm willing to do it. Obviously, they're going to do this. It's too freaking obvious that they wouldn't do this. You know, it's a stupid thing they wouldn't do it, obviously. But it's obvious they are going to do it. So, I'm fine with it. Triple H, Daniel Bryan, they're probably going to have a pretty good match. That match could steal the, the, the... Damn it. That match could, you know, be match the night. That could steal the show. And to me, if I'm Daniel Bryan, that's a lot better than being made of that at WrestleMania, which 
And a lot of people were saying, oh, if Daniel Bryan wins, maybe he'll be in the main event at WrestleMania because they're thinking about doing Triple Threat and he'll be heel and make much freaking sense. Wish I could see that possibility doing, especially since the fact that how many times have we seen Daniel Bryan in the last, I don't know, several months have two matches in one night? Two obvious guys. So just, just, just chill. Relax. Alright. And then this whole, okay, I'm going to get this out of the way. The whole CM Punk thing. Oh, we're gonna hijack Raw because it's in Chicago, guys. Do you even realize how stupid that sounds? There would be, yes, obviously throughout the night there was CM Punk's chance for the beginning, the middle, and the end. I get it. But does there be really give a goddamn? No, they don't. And why would they give a damn about one of their quote-unquote top stars not giving a rat's ass about the company? Not giving a rat's ass of, you know, what the fans are going to do. And he just picked up his, don't go to Boston, we'll say, he picked up his ball and went home. Well, in this case, he picked up his 12-year-old looking girlfriend, went home and looked like a pedophile doing it. But right, anyways, you know, CM Punk, I said it before, and I'm going to express it now, he's an overrated bitch. I said it, I'm saying it again, he's an overrated bitch. All right, he doesn't give a damn what you guys think. All right, obviously, if he didn't become, get back, Oh, look, Hunter, uh, you know, say Paul, Paul, then, I'm sorry for what I did, you know, I was, I had a lot of things going on, I'm sorry, you know, I know you guys are coming to Chicago soon for Raw, I'd love to be there, come back, please, accept my apology, I'd like to come back. Then I can see maybe Vince saying, alright, Paul, yeah, let's water on the bridge, let's do this, you know, something along those lines, but no, see a punk that'd be an arrogant little twat, and stay at home in Chicago, like, this is a freaking apartment, too. It's only, like, you know, I'm not saying it has to be, like, super seen, you know? Freaking has to be, like, oh, my man, oh, the mansion. It's, like, a hundred acres and shit of thing, of freaking land that I never go on. Because I'm too busy doing other shit. But, you know, it just proves that CM Punk give a damn about his fans. But, again, you guys still say, see your punk, see your punk, see your punk, see your punk. He just looks so stupid doing that. Like, it just proves my point how much of a bitch he is. Anyways, moving on to the night. Yeah, you have the whole Cesaro and Swagger teasing of, you know, breaking up and having a match at WrestleMania. I'm fine with that. Cesaro's over as hell right now. Uh, you know, even though they're a really good tag team, and, you know, that's another tag team I wish that could have had maybe a title shot for the tag title. But you know what? You know, Cesaro's over. You got Swagger as a face. <laughs> nice joke. Um, and then... You know, they'll just put up a pretty good match at WrestleMania, so I'm I'm no fine with that. Okay, now this whole Shield versus White Family part two. All right, I don't mind it. You know, it was a good match. It was kind of like in a movie sense, it was kind of like a sequel for me because you know you remember when you see the original movie, the first one, part one, you're like, oh, it was a really good movie. I really liked it. Then you're all excited. You go see part two, and you're just like, eh. Okay, we're gonna do the first one. Because you have that high expectation of how good it was. You know, it's kind of like in this scenario. Okay, first match of Chamber, Elimination Chamber, was good. Here, it was alright. Okay. You know, the ending, I think, kind of kind of threw me off. I think a lot of people off. Because, you know, let's face it, we all thought it would be, you know, Roman Reigns that'd be like, you know what, Dean? Screw you. That can go by be the peacemaker you want. I'm out of here. And then he just walks out. No. It's the peacemaker himself, that the Rollins that walks out. And I'm sitting there going, okay, I get it. They're obviously this is a, the biggest sign if ever, you know, breaking up. But what the hell? <laughs> and of all people, Seth so Rollins. Okay, Dean Ambrose obviously probably wouldn't make sense because Dean is just like, you know, and Roman are going at it. But freaking, like, Seth is just like, peace, you know? But... Ugh. Yellow. <laughs> Alright, and then this whole Summer Ray and Mango, Emma, Emma, and Tina Morello. What the fuck? At least you guys know that I was telling the truth about Emma being a good brother and Rink about her. She's a watcher in NXT along with Summer Ray. Meanwhile, go to be. Summer Ray gets to be about. And of course, Emma gets to be non stop. Even though obviously she does that next season, but Emma being involved in this, but still, like, 
doesn't do it every two seconds like she does all freaking wrong. Oh, I just hit the freaking in the sandwich. Oof. And if people are like, oh, she's so annoying. It's her gimmick. Hey, you guys, she takes too much shit too seriously. Too. Same as first Christian. Okay, why are you giving a free WrestleMania match on Raw? This is the second time you do it. First it was a tag title match. Oh, dude. Bella Twins versus Exana and Alicia Fox. I like the Bella Twins. I like blue. So it all works out for me. Yay. Okay. Del Rio and Ziggler. Okay, what the hell? Alright, I get it, you know, Aaron Paul was the guest host, whatever, and he was promoting uh, the, you know, remake of the Fast and the Furious, I may not, excuse me, uh, Need for Speed, uh, yeah, so, you know, obviously, Dolph Ziggler in the face, you know, come out with Aaron Paul, and, okay, you know your career is on the drain when you're, you're losing the freaking Dolph Ziggler on Monday Night Raw, yep, Del Rio, I'm talking about you. <sighs> and then, right, the ending of Raw, oh my god, okay, Daniel Bryan and Batista, obviously Batista being healed, I don't know if you guys have said this, but great move by WWE, it makes too much sense to not make him heal, right, the crowd already hates him, so why not give him actually legit reason to really hate him on purpose, the Batista, you know, so it makes sense. And why not have the guy who's most hated to be right now versus the guy who's the most liked to be right now? Ta da. But nonetheless, you know, it's. It was. Uh, you expect him to teeth them now, like that's all I gotta say. You know, and then you have obviously the authority, Godzilla, the Queen's the Queen's the. And. Have to come down to the ring. And, you know, obviously he's trying to raise hell, and again, guys, we're trying to be a triple threat match. <laughs> oh my god, that kick from Brian when he's on the ground, Triple H is over and he kicks him in the face, was freaking hilarious. <laughs> it's like, you're still nothing you oh, I don't know. It was just great to see, it was hilarious. But, you know, and then Stephanie mocking. <laughs> Rocking Daniel Bryan, and I know Orton was trying to hit the RKO on Batista, and then, uh, kind of a cluster at the end, but, you know, obviously in the end, the authority was standing over Daniel Bryan, and, and people are going to be like, oh, they're burying Daniel Bryan. They're burying him. Like, what about the definition of burying someone? Look at Dolph Ziggler other than tonight. That's a perfect example of being buried. All right. Look at freaking Zack Ryder. Look at JPG. Right, the man hasn't been on TV in like two years, alright? Maybe he's still employed with the disease. Yeah. Yeah, whoever says Daniel Bryan is being buried, just shut up. Because he's not so freaking stupid right now. Because Daniel Bryan is not good. Daniel Bryan's being pushed to the freaking moon, and you don't even know it's it, alright? Because he's facing good God himself, so alright? It's all obvious that God is actually going to go over. Excuse me, he's going to lay down for Daniel Bryan. Or Daniel Bryan can cover him. One, two, three, or, or hell, maybe even make him tap out, uh, so that he goes in the main event, uh, so you little fans can shut the hell up, uh. Like, what are you gonna say now? That when freaking God and Chuck and Daniel Bryan have their match at WrestleMania and Daniel Bryan win, are you gonna still say he's being buried? He just lost to, like, a first ballot Hall of Famer, the freaking COO of the freaking company. And the man who was sleeping with the boss's daughter. Alright, it has been for over a decade. Alright, he's still gonna be telling me that he's getting buried. But anyways, that's it for Monday Night Raw, guys. Overall, I thought it was a decent show. It wasn't too bad. A lot of things happened. You know, obviously, a lot of good things happened. to progress storylines and whatnot. And, you know, I told you guys. He's you know, post coming back. Oh, no, unless he's like, his new gimmick is the invisible man. Yeah, right. He didn't come back. Alright, just plain and simple. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm out.